Now is the time for you to rise and bring your squirrel to the bagel shop. Where I can get the cream cheese, the creamy, 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 cheesy, cheesy, cheesy cream. Yes, that's what I need. I need a heavy dose of cream cheese. Right in my face. iTunes. Apple. Okay, who here has, like, older tech, like, iPods, Apple, all that stuff? You know iTunes, where you manage your library and stuff like that, with all the music you probably collected over the last 20 years? Here's the thing. Apple Music came out with a new app, okay? All right? All right? All right? Listen, listen. Listen, okay, Sakharov, listen, do not get the Apple Music app. Do not do it if you have iTunes installed. Do not do that if you have iTunes installed. Please listen to me. Do not do that. Because here's what they do. Here's what they do. This, this all started because I was hoping that maybe iTunes had a freaking dark mode. You're like, oh, well, the Apple Music has a dark mode, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, maybe I'll just use that. Downloaded it, da 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 da. Basically, what it does, all right, it installs, goes to your iTunes library, automatically imports all your playlists and stuff into the new, you know, Apple uh, Music app from iTunes. And I'm like, oh, well, that's super convenient. So I, I after installing it, I open up iTunes. You know what iTunes is now? Podcasts. It literally wiped every playlist because it's in Apple Music. Wiped all the playlists, all the data, all the metadata, and everything. Everything. I have been using this program for about 15 to 20 years. Do you know how much work I put into playlists? All right. Yeah. So... You figure that's bad enough, right? It did that automatically. Yes. It did it automatic. It didn't even give you a warning like, oh, you're not going to be able to use iTunes for anything anymore. So even when you drag music back into old iTunes, it's like, um, we're going to have to classify this as a podcast now. Wait, what? But wait, it gets worse. Because for idiots like me that have old tech, like old iPods and all that other stuff, Guess what happens now? Just take a guess. Take a guess. Apple Music doesn't support iPods. Fifth generation, Shuffle, Nano, none of that. They're basically bricked. They do not work with it at all, ever. Doesn't even register it. You can't even see it. Oh, I connected it to my PC. Where is it? I don't know. Bleep yourself. Uh, What? I, I didn't get a warning doing this. Hey, before you install Apple Music, um, be aware that it's going to totally destroy iTunes and any support for iPod anything. Wait, excuse me? Yeah, so you just end up with podcasts. That's it. Don't get the Apple Music. Unfortunately, right, here's the problem. iTunes will eventually be discontinued. So... I had to take the time out to figure out how I'm going to be able to sync old iPods not using Apple. Here's how you do it. Okay? Here's how you do it. Who here remembers FUBAR 2000 as a media player? Right? Yeah. I have to go back to that. Here's what you do. You get FUBAR 2000, export all your playlists in a... You know, you can just kind of export your playlist in iTunes. Media library, all that stuff. There you go. All right, there you go. Killer notes. There is a plugin for FUBAR 2000. You got to do a little digging to find it, but it will allow syncing of iPods. Basically, a lot of the older ones, uh, not so much to shuffle. Who cares, right? Um, but it can be done. We tried it. We tested it. It does work. So you will have to export your entire library from iTunes, please, before you install Apple Music or before iTunes becomes obsolete, all right? Install, you got to bring all those playlists over to your FUBAR 2000, find that plugin, all right? Because then you could just go say, you know, it'll, it recognizes the iPod, it's not an issue. Burp, sync iPod, boom, it does it. And then it does it, it's done. You get, definitely try FUBAR because I, I know a lot of people here do actually have, I guess, digital versions of their physical media. Um, a lot of some people manage it through iTunes. Some people used FUBAR. Some people used VLC player, whatever. But I mean, my God, dude, that is devastating to any music collector 
who's been on that platform for decades, literal decades. The iPod came out in like 2005, right? So it's, it's like 2000, 2000 something, right? Or was it 2001? Whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, 20 years worth of music collecting, uh, you know, curating, doing playlists and stuff like that to have all that ripped out and destroyed and then unsinkable to, uh, you know, an actual device. I guess they expect you to just everything's in the cloud now. You know what's in the cloud? Your freaking morals. That's what it's saying. It's just, it's left your soul. Okay. You have no morality or cares for the music you inevitably destroyed with your digital crap. So now nobody buys physical media. There's literally people on Reddit who's like, yo, Apple just destroyed my want to collect music. And I'm like, oh my God. Kirk Planet, hi. What's up? The OG iPod. Yeah, let's go. Uh, what was the one that we just tried it with? Uh, look at it. It's so old, so old, but you know what? It works. Uh, I got all my playlists in. This was the one that was uh, synced to FUBAR 2000. So it's it syncs. It works perfectly. I'm happy about that. Uh, iTunes could go to hell as long as, as well as Apple Music. So uh, go die. <laughs> no, I mean, dude, a Apple, dude, they had, they had really good music players. Even uh, the fifth generation iPod had one of the best sound chips for the time period. But I'm just like, bro. You know, it's, it really messes things up for a lot of people. And I'm just, I want to throw that out there so you guys are aware. Um, if you do, if you are into music collecting and all that other stuff. My friend thinks streaming is the best thing ever. Never needing physical media ever again. I would try to keep to collect physical media of my favorite things when I can. Yeah, I'm the same way. But uh, I, I, underst I totally understand the convenience of streaming everything. But... Uh, in a couple of years, or our hearing may not know the difference depending on how this goes, but, uh, you know, it's kind of like weird. I remember iTunes could only, what, back things that you, uh, oh, bought through iTunes itself. I hated it. Yeah, they got rid of all the DMCAs and not DMCAs, uh, DRMs from their stuff. So if you do buy something, oh, however, however, I bought the soundtrack from iTunes because I couldn't find it anywhere else for the movie Suck, all right? It was a vampire movie about a band. I liked some of the songs in there. It was on there. Hey, iTunes had the soundtrack. You know, got it, downloaded it, all that other fun stuff. Yeah, when I go to look at my library of, at my past purchases, doesn't exist. I'm like, I know I gave you guys money. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Of course, I downloaded it and backed it up numerous times, but uh, yeah, where where is it? You know, at least with Steam, if something gets, you know, delisted from their thing, I still have access to it. I don't know, man. It's get it's getting a little tedious with everything. Yeah. People wonder why we're just making our own music, right?